question for the sake of the video. Okay. Yeah, with a um, you know predictions of a looming um, you know another kind of crisis, a you know perhaps an investment crisis. You know, what does that mean? You know, for for startups. A couple of things. I think that. You know, the idea that the financial crisis was the basis of opportunity, you know, the, the Chinese character for crisis is also similar to the one for opportunity. And even in terms of startups, if you look at really successful ones, like say Airbnb and Uber, if they were started, they were started in the financial, in the crisis in 2007 and 2008, if they were started a few years earlier or a few years later, they probably wouldn't have been successful. Why? Because at the time, there was a lot of like middle class, college educated professional people with no job that you know, couldn't get a job that decided to turn their family car into a taxi and their house into you know, a, a bedroom, you know, an, an Airbnb. So that works. The other, so first part is that crisis sees are good you know, when things are very, very stable, technology, government, et cetera, there's not a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs. The second thing is, I think the lesson from the 2000, uh, 1995 to 2000 period is that it was all this hype. You know, if I could sell spell.com, I could raise money, and there was no real revenue model. Now people are much more cautious. Now investors, you know, are like lemmings, you know, the, the angels and VCs and they, you know, jump on the latest bandwagon and, you know, sometimes don't remember history. But if you look at uh, these successful companies, they are not only parsimonious, you know, or, or save money and, and watch things carefully, but they're worried about generating revenue and, you know, having a sustainable business model. Um, I, I just had a chance to visit um, GenCell today, an absolutely amazing Israeli company. And I, I, I don't want to say the financial details because I don't know what part is proprietary, but they have an amazing factory doing some amazing things. And when he told me the amount of money raised, it was, it was almost nothing. And he's, he's turning down money. And, you know, you, you can do it that way. So I'd say... In crisis, there's opportunity, and concentrate on you know your business model, and and how does that work? You know, you exist for one thing to, to fill a need of a customer, and if you're filling the need of a customer, they'll pay for it. And um, you know, as as Bloomberg said, um, talent attracts capital better than capital attracts talent. So, you know, you've got something great even in the middle of the Great Depression. People were investing. Anyone else? Any other questions about uh, PACE, the program, New York City, participants? Um, yep. Any uh, like domains that you essentially work? That you have more oh, good, good question. Thank you. Yeah, the way we look at it is um, not so much a, an industry whether we think the company is going to be successful or make money or, or, or not make money. It really is the fit with... Um, what we think we can do to, to add value to the company. So, you know, with that said, you know, in hindsight, you wouldn't think we would have picked a stem cell therapy company. We don't have a medical school or anything. And that was a, a trial, and, and fortunately, it worked very well. But what we would hope to do is find the best fit for a company where our students could add value. So, you know, to let you know, Pace's history is really, it, w it was, primarily known as an accounting school going back to 1906, and then finance and business. And now, again, we have computers and you know, law school and nursing school, a, a, a College of Arts and Sciences, um, the, an acting school that's, you know, I don't know if you watch Inside the Actor Studio, it's, it's filmed at Pace. So there's a lot of stuff going on at the university, but we would try to find, you know, what are the types of businesses that our students would like understand, be able to sink their teeth into, help with, et cetera. Because, you know, the do the, when the, the donation was made in the program, you know, it, it's nice that Michael Desert wants to help Israeli startups come to New York the way he came to New York. He also wants to give pay students um, that opportunity for experiential learning, you know, to, to really hands-on apply what they've been taught in the classroom to real companies and work with, you know, senior management and, and have an impact on, 
you know, on a, on a company. And they're not supposed to be like, you know, low-level administrative people. We, we try to really get the, the best and brightest. And um, you know, to be honest, it's a little bit, I, I use the analogy, like vintages of wine. You know, some years there's a great harvest and some year not so much. You know, hopefully for, you know, the coming term in uh, September when the program starts, we'll be able to recruit some, you know, some great students. We had some, some great technology students. Um, as you see, we, we got a lot of students, you know, from China and India, and, um, you know, hopefully we'll be lucky and get some really good students. But this is more visionary, but what's the practical, what would you say was, would be practical, like, in, the, in this, like, five-year uh, progress? Oh, for the... Some more, what kind of type of students you have now that you would like to give them, like, what these options to work with? What kind of startups? Uh, you got my questions? No, maybe I misunderstood. I thought you meant what kind of startups are we looking for from Israel to take into the program? But at one level, and you're like practically what type of students, what's the demand that you have right now for startups? Oh, for the, 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 for the students, what, 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 what kind of things do they want to work on? Yeah. Okay, I, I understand. I think that um, the... You know, idea now, you know, the students are so focused they're on, you know, apps and new media and social networking. You know, we, we do an app design contest and they all have ideas. And I think that they are, are really interested in, you know, mobile, social, apps. Um, you know, there's, uh, with the technology side, it's, it's not really on, on pure technology innovation. It's more like the UX, UI, user interface, user experience design. Um, I think, you know, from the marketing side, being able to do market research, not, you know, just Googling things, but as Alexa said, go out and, and talk to people, people with a general business degree. The way I, I sometimes think about pay students is like with all the activity going on in New York, we have some very successful CEOs of Fortune 500 companies and, and some, some well-known entrepreneurs. But in a lot of ways, they're kind of the horsepower behind a lot of the startups in New York, so they're running, you know, the back office, they're running the accounting portion, they're, you know, running a lot of different areas. Um, actually, Yaron Galai, his previous company, his um, uh, partner was, was a, a pay student. Um, so I, I kind of look at it as a horsepower for running a, a company, and they're, they're interested, as students, in things that they understand and know. I don't think a lot of students know that much about you know, stem cell therapies, but they know about marketing and media and apps and social and mobile and web. Yeah. And, and just to understand, they come in as students and they work during the school year? How does that uh, yep. work? Like so, so in September, so we will announce like the application for the program and we'll review them. We'll probably pick um, two companies, you know, uh, in July, announce it in August, and then um, before the semester starts in September, we'll, we'll start to promote it. And September through October, we'll do the best we can to recruit the best students. And then they would, you know, probably start working, you know, with the company, arrange some Skype calls, et cetera, in October. And by the way, I, don't, I, I perhaps didn't make it um, clear. If we don't look at this as like an incubator space in New York or like a, a WeWork, I mean, people are welcome to stay longer, but typically, they would come, you know, one, two, three, four times a year, you know, like you know, I'll had conferences in New York and to meet investors or potential investors, uh, partners, research, et cetera, mostly for, for speaking at, at very high level conferences. And then you have a home base in New York. So if you wanted to have a meeting or like when they wanted to have a, a book, um, you know, signing, those things. Now, welcome to stay more, um, the lab is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, but it's not a huge space. Again, it's not like a WeWork where the intention is to go over there and work. It's to have a home base in New York and to use the students. And, you know, whether it's WhatsApp, which I must confess I didn't use until I got here and I don't know anyone who uses it until I got here, um, or Skype calls, FaceTime, uh, uh, messaging, et cetera, um, whatever works on and we try to lay out some you know near-term and long-term goals to keep the students on track as well as what kind of deliverable are you looking for at the end and the, and the companies get to stay in the exclusion of the students you know um, that that's something after learning from the first year or two um, maybe we should do more of that so what we ask for is like as specific a job description as possible 
and we post those job descriptions in the end, we've hired the students, but uh, there's no reason. I would be more than happy to take the final resumes and, and share them with the company. So in the past, we've asked for a job description, and we've selected them, but would love the input. And one more question. Sure. For the like the students have somebody local that kind of uh, guides them and all the students and stuff, somebody from the university staff, or yep. is it just the company? No, no, very good question. So. I, um, so, you know, my, my full-time role is as a, a professor in the management department, so running this lab and all that stuff I described is just kind of a, a side stipend. Um, so I have ultimate oversight, but we have a, a full-time employee, the associate director of the lab, who's responsible for that scheduling and paying and keeping up and making sure deliverables are met. So that's a, a full-time staff member. Yeah, we don't want anything, claim anything. If you want us to sign a non-disclosure, we're happy, but no revenue, no IP, no nothing. If you want a, a non-disclosure, the students sign it, but um, you know, we have absolutely no business revenue, anything interest. Brilliant. My name is Michelle Spector. I'm a 1992 graduate of Pace University. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first program of telecommunications. Okay. Very exciting times, AT&T versus MCI, no internet as we know it today. And um, so I'm familiar, I see you recruited Jeff Fulber for your video. He's not really a Israeli, uh, feels very well. So what are the real benefits for an Israeli company? They are not a young startup, a typical uh, two founders who have an idea and they want to penetrate the market. We are more stable company in terms of uh, our existence, we were founded in 2000, uh, okay. but we regenerate our technology okay. to keep ahead uh, of the market requirements. So things we do today in the smart city space is all very new, although the company is not a, a new yeah. company. So what would right. be the benefits for a company of ourselves to well, apply for the program? So I think some, I mean, hopefully it's a benefit to just have a home base in New York, whether it's simply to get charge your iPhone, internet access, have a place to meet other than a Starbucks, um, or the university's facilities. If you need a, a classroom, a big lecture hall to give a presentation, those are things we can get. And the two students, hopefully we get two students. People always need help with some kind of market research, et cetera. But the other thing is our connection with the New York City entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, and that's particularly me. So I'm, you know, as I mentioned, on the board of the MIT Enterprise Forum. I'm on, you know, a lot of private boards and nonprofit boards, and very connected with angel investors, with VCs. Um, speak at a lot of conferences. Just have a lot of connections in New York, and you know, and that would be, and that would be one. So a lot of the, again, the New York Angels, the New York VCs the corporations, the media, um, you know, again, get a lot of attention, the, the Bloomberg uh, Business Week um, correspondent for Israel Technology is you know, someone I know, um, Wall Street Journal uh, the papers. There's, there's a lot of uh, inquiries and, and you know, we also have a, a public relations office and department, an external firm that, you know, is, is interested in promoting these types of things, so I'm not sure if that answers your questions, but those are all Thank examples. Yes, was there anyone else? But in, do you compete like with other entities? Is there anything that makes you exceptional with this? That your students have like better skills or anything? Yes, uh, we as a startup would love to like to like consider right. working with you instead of somebody else. What yeah. Are my benefits? Um, I, I don't know that other, you know, I'm sure other schools have, have, have programs. I don't know about this type of program. It's, it's really a niche program. I mean. Taking, taking students to work in a startup, you know, it's, it's a risk also. Sure. No, no, and what I say is, um, listen, these interns should never be more, like, you, you should realize you're not, you're not hiring you know, consultants from McKinsey or, you know, BCG to do work but they should never take more effort than they're um, uh, putting in. So for example, um, I'll share this with Abe Carmelli, um, the CEO of Echo Fusion. He's a um, 
a Columbia Law School grad. He, he started over half a dozen companies already. Yeah, very successful, very business person. And he came in, I remember the first day we met with the, the students, and he had this big timeline. Here's all the milestones, here's all the drivels. And then he gave them, here's the two books I want you to read on customer experience. Here's the three podcasts I want you to follow. Here's the online courses I want you to register for. This, that, like as a lawyer, you know, every I had to be dotted, every T had to be crossed. We strive for perfection. Okay, we don't need absolute perfection here, but this is very demanding. Now, um, Javelli, the, the Indian student you saw, raised to the occasion, but there was another student who didn't, and he contacted me, you know, sent an email, can we talk, immediately called him. He said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, this just isn't worth it. it it's, it's, it's not delivering, it's not worth my time. So, you know, thank you. He's fired the next day. I let the student know friendly, oh, it's not a good fit. We look for another one and, and he's gotten value. So it should never, you know, on one hand, you know, you're not getting a free, again, McKinsey consultant, but on the other hand, it, it definitely shouldn't be like work for you. It should be value added. And, and, and you know, and, and let me know if, if there's a problem. You know, I, um, you know uh, the first year we did it, you know, sometimes the, the communications weren't there and, you know, we, we did it just as a trial two years ago, and, and I think we, we learned a, a lot and, um, you know, hopefully get better. It's a double cultural differences. You also yeah. work in the States, and then you have foreign students from all over the world. So. Right. Right. No, it, it is. Anybody? Okay. I know where they want to direct us next. I'd like to uh, thank Bruce for this, uh, for this presentation, for this uh, info session that uh, foremost uh, for the excellent opportunity that the Tate uh, Israel Initiative uh, is offering to the startup companies. And I think the example that uh, Yael gave speaks for itself. It's a very worthwhile program. And I hope many of you will submit and that uh, you will be able, that uh, this project will be able to offer real value to the companies that uh, we're doing. Um, so thanks for coming, and please join us for a reception, networking, get to know each other, get to know Bruce and the program, Yael and Matthias, for sure. Well, listen, I don't know if there's any other PACE alumni in the audience. We have Ilan um, as well. Tomorrow from 5.30 to 7.30, we have a special PACE alumni networking reception at Tangier open bar, food and drink. I want to make sure to get your information. And immediately afterwards, from 7.30 on, we're having one of the um, entrepreneurship at the bar, Yazamud Al-Habar, and I'm going to speak on intrapreneurship um, and, and maybe repeat some stuff from New York. But, but the idea is on entrepreneurship or acting like an entrepreneur in a company. So thank you. There's some amazing cheese.